questions 11 to 13. Okay, so this is from uh, the uh, book 3 of uh, biology, section 1.3, and um, it shows you the cell cycle similar to what uh, Acer has, uh, just a small, um, uh, a minor difference, but um, uh, very uh, easy to, um, uh, to be able to uh, see how it coordinates with what they do. So anyway, the um, one you can see here, uh, we have mitosis uh, over here, and uh, then we have uh, interphase. So interphase is this entire section here. So you can see interphase is the longest uh, part of the cell cycle. In fact, um, Acer can actually ask you a random seeming question on the exam. What phase do you, uh, is the following cell likely to be in? And even if you have no indication as to what phase it is, then you know it must it's most likely in interphase because it's the longest of the cell cycle if uh, Acer is giving you the choice between prophase, metaphase, anaphase, telophase, and interphase, then um, interphase is most likely if there's no other indicator, no other information. And so you see how interphase is such a massive part of the cell cycle. And uh, the, the only uh, little difference here is here uh, we show uh, the G0 phase coming off early in G1, early in G1, whereas um, Acer has it coming off in the middle of G1, but uh, they just want to clearly emphasize to you um, that um, that uh, most cells that are non-dividing are G0, and uh, this is a phase that exits G1. So although we show it exiting G1 early, they show it in the middle, but uh, that's okay. But the usefulness of this diagram and the reason I, I want to show it uh, to you, not just because it's pretty, but because of a very important thing that it's expected that you understand is that after mitosis, uh, you, have, uh, you have DNA, you have the individual chromatids that have just separated into the uh, different uh, nuclei. And then those individual DNA or haploid um, status, they're going to duplicate in the synthesis phase, S phase, duplication uh, phase or replication. I find it interesting that in the fourth line, uh, Acer says uh, during phase S, chromosomal replication takes place. They didn't use the word synthesis. They didn't use the word duplication, which makes you think of doubling, which, of course, look, it is doubling here. You see one chromatid, and now you see it a full chromosome. So we see there's a uh, increase in the quantity of DNA in the cell. And then so this uh, persists in G2. And then in early mitosis, um, then there will be... Um, uh, you know, in prophase, of course, you see the, the chromosomes uh, condense, and then in uh, metaphase, they line up along the equatorial plate, and then in anaphase, that's when the chromatids split along their centromeres, being pulled apart by their kinetochores into uh, the opposing poles. Um, of course, it's not that you have to really memorize, but you should have a basic understanding of those processes of the cell cycle, because the, sometimes they will show you the genetics of in the nucleus and ask you what phase uh, the cell is in. So all that is possible. So um, the most important thing that you see here is when the chromosome is being duplicated, you see from uh, in the synthesis phase, and then uh, by early mitosis, it's going to... Uh, uh, the chromosome will split into individual chromatids, thus reducing the quantity of DNA again uh, in the cell. So that's going to be the status in G0 and G1, uh, where you have um, uh, a lower quantity of DNA and then a doubling up here in synthesis in G2. And so that allows us to understand uh, the fluorescence in the uh, flow cytometry. But anyway, uh, uh, to, f to start with the first question, the first paragraph said most cells in the body at any time are in the non-dividing stage, uh, as you see here, which is the uh, G0 phase. And so in terms of the amount of time a dividing cell spends in each stage, the most variable stage, well, uh, it's going to be G1 because you have this uh, exit and a re-entry um, as it explains in the text that you can have cells exiting and stopping cell division and that's what most cells are doing at any given one mo at any given moment 
and then they can return to G1. And so this is a variable stage, whereas synthesis in the cell cycle, it seems like quite a regular uh, thing. It's part of the cell cycle. Uh, G2 is a very regular part of the uh, cell cycle. We see it there. We see synthesis occurring uh, very regular. So in fact, these are the hours uh, given. Uh, you can see uh, approximately uh, 10 hours from 5, 10 uh, to 15 to 19 for G2. So that's four hours for G2. So these, these are actually the time. So you could imagine that if you're going off the highway for some period of time, go shopping, whatever, uh, that's going to be a variable period of time before returning. So G1 definitely is going to be the most variable stage. 11, the answer is A. So Let's take a look at uh, 12 and 13, given what we just discussed. So, given what we just discussed, um, we know that there's going to be one phase which is going to have half of the DNA and another phase is going to have double uh, the DNA. In other words, because uh, don't forget the relative fluorescence, which is this axis, this is just, uh, this is just number of cells up here. So that's the amount of the cells, but it's the fluorescence uh, which is giving us um, the uh, relative amount of DNA because that's what we're explained, that the fluorescent dye binds the DNA. So the amount of fluorescence is telling us how much DNA. And I just showed you the image showing you that, in fact, if you want to uh, pause right now, and label the diagram as to where would you put G0, G1, where would you put um, synthesis, where would you put, um, for example, G2 and um, the early stage of mitosis, and then you can come back. Okay, so he, this has to uh, represent uh, G0, G1, because it has half of the fluorescence. It has half of the fluorescence, so that means it's the stage that has half the DNA. Keep in mind the cell cycle that I just showed you. And then this, the part that we know has twice the amount, um, that's going to be G2, uh, according to what we just saw, and the early part of mitosis um, before, uh, say, for example, um, uh, telophase when you get uh, uh, nuclear membrane reformation then you get actually uh, then you get uh, the separation of the cell so so actually it's G2 and uh, mitosis because within an individual cell because the fluorescence here is per cell it's fluorescence over cell per cell so then uh, yes it's, it'll be G2 and uh, and in mitosis per cell and then uh, somewhere in here is going to be synthesis as the process for duplicating uh, um, uh, the DNA, replicating the DNA is occurring, and then it takes us up to the uh, G2 and uh, M phase. So this is uh, just uh, logically based on just a, just a very basic understanding of what's going on in the nucleus of cells. And of course, we said, uh, you know, I, I described earlier that um, <clears throat> understanding uh, the cell and a basic understanding of DNA and genetics is very important. That and uh, um, circulation and, uh, um, yes, and the eukaryotic cell, those are fundamental uh, for this exam. So uh, this gives us a, a general idea. Now we can look at the f uh, question number 12, the height of the peak indicates. So the height of the peak indicates number of cells. Let's not confuse that with fluorescence, which is uh, telling us about the amount of DNA in the cell. So the height uh, of uh, peak 1, which is Roman numeral 1 here, uh, this is going to be consistent, uh, as we said, with uh, G0 or G1. You can um, uh, either or. And so those would have half of the, the DNA. Those would be most of the cells in the cell cycle. It's the longest uh, part of the cell cycle, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So um, this is uh, all the good reasons for this having the most number of cells. And so uh, 12, the answer is A. Of course, uh, looking at um, B, it says cells spend a very long time in the S phase. But we're Where's time? Uh, we would have to have time along the x-axis or something where we can compare the amount of time spent in one phase or the other. So uh, we, c we can't make that conclusion with answer choice B. Uh, answer choice C says cells in G2 
uh, cells in G2 have half, have twice, sorry, as much DNA as G1. I agree with that, but that has nothing to do with, um, uh, let me make sure that that's uh, true. Yes, uh, G G2 twice as much as uh, G1. Yes, okay. But that doesn't have to do with the height. The height is about the number of cells. It's not about f the fluorescence. Had they uh, the question been formed uh, to say something to the effect of uh, the location along the x-axis is an indicator of, um, you know, the amount of DNA or indicates that G2 has twice the DNA is G1. Okay, but if we're examining the y-axis, nope, this is number of cells. It's, it's very clear, and so answer choice A is correct. And looking at D, <coughs> cells uh, in G1 <coughs> fluoresce more than those in other phases of the cell cycle. Well, you know, obviously per cell they fluoresce uh, much less than the other phases of the cell cycle. So that's an incorrect statement. So 12 remains A. And then we move on to question 13, which of the following flow cytometry graphs, blah, blah, blah. So not actively dividing is referring to G0. So if it's not actively dividing, we're referring to G0. We're looking for a, lo a large peak that's going to be below the number 500 because we've already established that a large peak below the number four, 500 has uh, half the DNA um, as compared to uh, the other phases. So G0 would have to be uh, in this area and it would have to be one peak uh, so uh, answer choice A would be incorrect at 500. That doesn't make any sense. Uh, B also, that doesn't look like cells. That looks like death. Um, and, uh, and D, uh, yes, it's just random. So um, answer choice C is consistent uh, with what we've already um, come up with. And uh, as I said, uh, uh, this uh, cell cycle is, is reviewed at the end of the first chapter in biology.